Welcome to the 2016 district-wide programs graduation celebration. Yay! Sorry for the confusion. We think we have everything figured out and there's always something that goes wrong. So hopefully that's it and we're gonna have smooth sailing from here on out. So I have to tell you guys, this is my absolute favorite day of the entire year. It actually ranks just a little bit above Christmas for me. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Because this is the day I'm reminded why I have the best job in the entire world. And that's because I've had to, been able to have a small part in the lives of the 24 graduates sitting in front of us today. And there's nothing better than that. Because I am so proud of you guys and you need to be proud of yourselves. So this day today has been decades in the making. Many of you started school when you were only like three years old. And you were on this long path to graduation. For some of us, it's a little longer, but you're here now today. And on that path, you've had lots of twists and turns and hills and valleys and big boulders of problems in the way. And I'm sure there were many times where you sat at a meeting, especially a school meeting, because I was there with some of you and thought, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to graduate from high school. But guess what? You are. And you did it. And you did it because you were persistent and you kept working at it. And you also did it because of the people that are in this room. You've had great supports around you that you've taken advantage of to get where you are today. You've got your families. We've got wonderful families that I've enjoyed getting to know over the years. You've had your teachers, your associates, your support staff, your case managers, all of those people at your schools that have been there to help you along. You also have the Des Moines schools. What a great place to go graduate from high school. You need to be proud that you went to school in a district that supports all students, that made sure that you had a path to graduation. And you grew up in the Des Moines community, because I know many of you have had community supports to help you along the way. You've had mentors, caseworkers, all sorts of people that have helped you get where you are today. And it's really important that you remember that. You have a huge village of support surrounding you. I want you just to take a minute before I turn the program over and feel that pride. You've accomplished this huge task that you've been working on all of these years, and you need to be proud. You've worked hard. You've made it. Because life, there's going to be some other boulders in your path. There are going to be some other hard times. And when those times come, I want you to remember how it feels right now to think, man, I did it. Sure, I have to sit in this hot auditorium and listen to a bunch of people talk at me, but you know what? I graduated from high school, and that's a really huge accomplishment. So we're going to start the program. We're very fortunate to have a number of student speakers here today. We love it when our students can come up and share. We offered the opportunity to our students, and we've had a few takers. So our first speaker is Ms. LaKayla Robinson. Hi, my name is LaKayla Robinson, and I am proud to be a 2016 graduate. At one time, I didn't believe in myself, but here I stand as a graduate of 2016. I told myself I can do this and to never give up. I got this and I did this. Des Moines Alternative has helped me in so many ways, like helping me stay motivated and focused. I stand before you as a, 2000, as a graduate of 2016 to say thank you for everyone who supported me. Our next speaker is Ms. Cheyenne Hunt. Hello, my name is Cheyenne Hunt. I came to Focus High School 
probably during my 12th grade. My mom really wanted me to come to focus. I was skipping class, getting in, getting my teacher's attitude, sleeping in class, and not following directions. My mom thought focus was a good, good for me to, because my classes would be smaller and I would have more help with my work. When I first came to focus, I was a hardhead. I didn't want to listen. I wanted to be in control of what, of what I did. I did. I did not like change. When I found out my old counselor was the focus counselor, it made me feel better about being here. She made me realize that focus wasn't a bad place. She really helped me turn my attitude around and looked at focus from a different point of view. I had a hard time through all through school. I got picked on um, because I was different and I moved around a lot so I was hard to keep friends I was in trouble I was a troublemaker got kicked out of class and slept in class too I remember one one day when I was in 10th grade my one of my teachers Miss Nita's always pushed me to do my work and get off my iPad when I would we would butt heads all the time I want to thank my mom and some of my teachers and my counselor for helping me get through school and I want to thank my great-grandfather for always believing in me and helping me get through things that I could, couldn't do and make me see things positive and always, um, always being there for me. My plans for the future. I'm going to get a good job and find an apartment and live in and get a, get a car and try to live a happy life. Our next speaker is Cesar Lopez Ramirez. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome you to graduation ceremony. I am thankful to my parents, teachers, associates, and therapists who supported me at Focus High School. I am proud to the, be the first in my family to graduate. I look forward to continue to study and be a responsible young adult. Congratulations to all the 2016 graduates. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Iron Killings. Good afternoon. I would, I would like to start by welcoming our friends, families, and teachers who are here today to support us as we graduate from high school. I know, from, I know that for many of us, has getting to this day has not been easy. We have dealt with struggles at home, at school, and in the community. Many of us has grew up very quickly and handled adult problems at a young age, no matter how hard your path has been. So what matters is that you made it there were days when I didn't want to come to school, when worries inside of school were too much for me to overcome. I figure out that though that best place for me was in school. If I wanted to have any kind of future for myself, I know that I needed an education and an education. My advice to students who are here still in school is to stay, in, stay strong, show up, pay attention and don't let anything stop you from coming. No matter what your past look like, you have a right to dream about a better future, but it's up to you to make it happen. Many of us have always been independent and felt like we can only rely on ourselves. But I have learned that there are a lot of people there who want to help us, let them, our teachers and families and communities group want to see us be successful and are their so support. Us, we might not be where we are today without them. Remember where you came from, 
but dream of your future to we all have younger brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews who are looking up to us. Give them a good role model to look up to and encourage them to make the right choices. To, to the class of 2016, congratulations, good luck. And we have one more speaker, Mr. Jack Berry. Hello, my name is Jack Berry. I'm graduating from Focus High School program. I want to thank everybody who helped me get here. First off, I want to thank my parents and my other family members because of how much they supported me. I also want to thank my friends. They were there for me when I struggled. I want to thank my school teachers and other staff at school. They pushed me to work hard. They didn't give up on me no matter how, no matter, no matter how stubborn I was. I also want to thank my therapist for being there for me so I had someone to talk to that I can trust. I want to thank Orchard Place staff because they taught me how to manage my anger. I want to thank all the staff at Mainstream House. They helped me learn my daily living skills. But most of all, I also want to thank God for watching over me. I want to thank you for being there for me even when I didn't believe in myself. So thank you for everything. Great job, student speakers. That is really scary to do. Let's give them all another round of applause. <laughs> we have a special guest speaker today, and it's somebody that has been involved in almost all of you and your lives as you've gone through the Des Moines school system. Linda Mayer has been with the schools for a long time. And as we're getting ready for you to graduate, she's finally going to graduate from Des Moines schools also and move on to retirement. So we thought it was fitting as you guys both start new chapters in your life that she comes and shares some of her knowledge with you. So welcome Linda O'Mara. Okay, so I am shorter than everyone else who spoke can you can you all hear me? No. Can you hear me now? I've been saying that for 40 years. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was a professional joke. All right. So I want to welcome everyone here, and I applaud all of you who spoke before me because it's not an easy thing to do, and so you kind of you know, pave the way for me to speak today, and I appreciate it. So first of all, I'm very pleased to be here to, and to join you in this graduation. So congratulations to all the graduates. That's the very first thing I want to say. You need to be very proud of yourself for accomplishing this goal. Your families also need to be very proud. And be careful, families, because today's the biggest day they're going to be asking for money. So be careful of that. And uh, so I've attended graduation ceremonies since I was about your age for family members, friends, former students, and my own. At every graduation I attend, I see a lot of excitement, like I'm seeing right now, in the eyes of all the graduates sitting before me. And then somebody like me gets up. You know, they're ready to cross the stage. And then somebody like me gets up, and they start talking. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me, all right? I'm only going to talk for about eight minutes. And those of you who know me know that that's an exceptionally limited amount of time for me to be talking. <laughs> but I, just, I think you deserve to know when it's going to end, all right? Can you bear with me for that long? All right, can I see your eyes? All right, all right, okay. So I'm going to start with kind of a little bit about myself. Um, also, those of you who know me know that that's quite typical. So I remember my own graduation from high school. It was back in 1970. That's a half a century ago, like 50 years, right? 50 years, OK? <laughs> well, 46, but you know, when you round up, you round up. And uh, so the world was a little different then. Richard Nixon was the president, and we all know how that ended. 
You know, a co the cost of a home was about $23,000. Postage stamps were six cents. A gallon of gas was 36 cents. The most popular TV shows were the Mary Tyler Moore Show and the Partridge Family. I'm sure you're all still watching those today. Uh, the most popular music performers were Simon and Garfunkel, Diana Ross, the Jackson Five, and the Beatles. It was also the year that Paul McCartney announced that the Beatles were disbanding. I have not gotten over it yet. <laughs> Women wore ponchos, long pleated dress shirts, or, dr or shirt dresses in bold print lounge dresses. I'm not even going to tell you what those are. Men wore tunics. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> tunics, pullover sweaters with dickies, you know, the little built-in turtlenecks and double-breasted suits. I remember high school well, not just what was going on in the world, because I was probably not very, uh, paying very much attention to that, but I remember it differently than my parents and teachers. And so they still tell me that I did not have a positive high school career. I still tell them that I did that, that it met all my expectations. <laughs> and so, you know, <laughs> Okay, so you can hear me. That's the good news. Okay. So I guess it depends on your perspective. I remember thinking that most of what I, you know, was to learn, I didn't need to learn, and that my teachers didn't understand life as I knew it. Of course, remember, I was your age, right? I thought that homework was a suggestion for extended learning, of which I had no interest. I remember the times I gypped schools with friends. Those resulted, this is all true, in Saturday school and detentions. There were other things as well. I asked to see the nurse a lot. I knew that was the quickest way out of class. I also thought I was smarter than my teachers and would challenge their thinking, but trust me, always in a very positive way. <laughs> but what, why go on? I was a below average student. I really never excelled. I didn't see the purpose. I had other things on my mind, other things going on in my life. Then during my senior year, I started thinking differently. Someone, a teacher of mine, actually, began mentoring me, and she changed my life forever. That's when I knew I wanted to be a teacher. It was like a calling, I swear it was. And even when I go to the grocery store, or Walmart, or someplace, I, that teacher in me is still out there talking to people who think I should go away. <laughs> and so it just happens automatically. Uh, I applied for college and found out that I really wasn't a very good applicant. You see, I had not graduated in the top half of my class. Actually, the truth be known, I hadn't even graduated in the top three quarters of my class. At any rate, I realized it was going to be difficult for me to get into school. It was going to be difficult for me to become a teacher. I had a lot of barriers I had to overcome. It wasn't until I was about to graduate that I ever in my life set a personal goal. You set a personal goal, each of you here, to graduate from high school. I, many, I wonder how many of you did it this year when you saw that it was possible. There is something about being, seeing the end of something that gives you the motivation to finish. So I applaud you all again. Uh, so in this way, like other ways, like you know, going to college and having to take all sorts of remedial classes and doing all sorts of things that I actually never did in college either, um, it, it was, I just realized I was a late starter. So some of you are late starters, but you're great finishers, okay? Needless to say, I got it together and graduated, went on to college and became a teacher. And to this day, I love the students who are, the, who are kind of lost like I was, who don't quite fit into the mainstream in some way. So I always remember what Dr. Seuss says, why fit in when you were born to stand out? And each of you, in your own way, was born to stand out. Do you hear what I am saying to you? Each of you, in your own way, was born to stand out. I personally know some of you graduates. I've worked with you and your families, and I've seen you grow so very much. Others I've gotten to know from a distance while working with your teachers. They have told me about you know, what you have within you that has gotten you to this point, your courage, your determination, your capacity to care. You also have stories to tell about what it took for you to get here. Your parents and teachers have stories too, but like mine, they might be just a little different. Regardless of who's telling the story, I know that you have overcome great challenges to get to this day. 
Life circumstances in some cases delayed your time of graduation, yet nothing has stopped you from reaching your goal. And you've done it in style. Everyone in this room today can testify to you know, what you did academically. But you are more than your grade point average. You are unique not because of what you accomplished in graduating from high school, but in the way that you did it. So we're at the end of the track season now. Any of you know anything about track graduates? Do you know anything about track? Oh, this is going to be this is going to be long and painful then. <laughs> there are all sorts of competitions like sprinting, long distance running, hurdling, jumping, and pole vaulting. Does any of that ring a bell to any of you? Oh, good. We're okay. We're all right then. Although sprinters and the fastest runners get all the glory in the in the publicity, I most admire the hurdlers. So, how many of you have ever seen someone hurdle? At least two of you. That means I don't have to demonstrate it up here. That's good. Okay. So. You have to have a lot of skills to be a hurdler. One is being able to jump over barriers. Another is being able to get up after falling, sometimes very hard. For most hurdlers to be good, they have to practice clearing hurdles over and over again to get the skill set down. And to finish a race, they have to find the strength and courage within them to continue after hitting a barrier and to get up after they have fallen. Each of you is a phenomenal hurdler. You have been practicing and you have hurdled everything on your way to graduation. You have fallen and you have gotten up, some of you many times. You have practiced what you needed to learn in order to achieve your goal of graduating from high school. And here you are, having shown a level of leadership by graduating. Leadership that will help your younger siblings, family members, friends, classmates, set a goal to reach the same of graduating. This makes you, among a lot of other things, very positive role models. Think of all the good things I am saying about you today. They are all true. <coughs> the thing is, though, you've not been alone on the road to graduating high school. You've had coaches and your parents, teachers, associates, social workers, etc. They've all been there for you. They've all taught you skills you needed to get over the hurdles to graduation. So to those who support you, I offer this. Congratulations to your parents and family members. Be patting yourself on the back for a long and hard job well done. <laughs> Congratulations to your teachers, associates, and support staff who provided the learning opportunities and guidance to help you reach this goal. Be proud of the love you have shown your students. You see your persistence and meaningful effort sitting here in front of you today. As I said before, graduation is a turning point in your journey through life. Now here's the tricky part. Are you still listening? Do I still have two minutes to talk? Okay, and you're all happy about that? Okay, all right. So here's the tricky part. As you leave high school, the hurdles are gonna continue to come. This has been true for all the adults in the room, parents and teachers in life alike. It is true for everyone in life and you're going to have to decide how to get over them and who you're going to let coach you when you fall. We all fall. Here's another tricky part. Until now your education has been carefully planned for you. You generally knew what you needed to learn and how you would be assessed so you could prove you learned it. That's not really the way the real world works. So in the real world, there aren't any daily objectives for you to look at on the board. Nobody's going to tell you necessarily what they are. Tests come totally unannounced. They just come. This means that you may be ending your formal schooling, but your education will continue in the real world of daily life. Class of 2016, here are three final thoughts. I've shared them with my family members when they graduated from high school, and I think that they have served them well. Are you ready to listen to three things? So am I. One, <laughs> life will happen to you. Try to affect the outcome. Keep getting better at trusting yourself and being confident. There are some of you who had no confidence in your learning and your ability to achieve when you were younger. You have gotten over that. You became confident enough to finish what you needed to graduate from high school. You already learned that there's a way around over or through the barriers that you faced in graduating from high school. I want you to take what you've learned by getting through those barriers into real life. 
It's not the barriers to stop your progress, but your confidence. Be confident. Be willing to try to break through the fear and the doubt that you may have. Or, as Dr. Seuss puts it, if things start happening, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along and start happening too. Keep going, all right? Number two, the world needs you. Be who you are. Don't let others define you. Be the person who set the goal to graduate from high school despite hardships, despite what your friends were doing. Don't be trapped by other people's thinking or let other opinions sway you. Or, as Dr. Seuss said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Number three, your life matters. You matter. Every single one of you matters in this great big universe of ours. No matter where you go, no matter what you do for a living, you are a person and what you contribute will always matter. You are all needed to make this world a better place. Set your goals high and continue to develop your skills and potential, but be careful in how you measure your success. Don't compare it to others. You are unique and wonderful all on your own. Or, as Dr. Seuss says, today you are you, you are truer than true, there is no one alive that is youer than you. Stay true to yourselves. You're completing a wonderful journey today and starting a new one when you walk across the stage. I'm proud of you and all that you have accomplished and so has everyone in this room. Take care, know that everyone in this room will continue to be here for you, including Des Moines Public School staff, all right? And I have one last thing to say to you. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. You are on your own and you are the one who will decide where to go. Thank you. Des Moines Public Schools exists so that students graduate with the knowledge, skills, and abilities to be successful at the next stage of their lives. That 13-year journey is supported by thousands of staff members throughout our district, many of whom are with us today. If you work for DMPS, please stand, including those of you on the stage, and please join me, the rest of you, in recognizing that team that supports our students from preschool all the way through graduation day. Thank you. And now, on behalf of the district staff, the community of Des Moines, the teachers of district-wide programs, I am honored to confirm that the members of the district-wide programs class of 2016 have met the requirements established by the state of Iowa, our Board of Education, and have demonstrated all the qualifications to receive a certificate of graduation from the Des Moines Public Schools. esteemed school board director, Connie Bozen. As superintendent of the Des Moines schools, I proudly commend to you for the presentation of diplomas, the district-wide programs class of 2016. There's so much I wanna say about each one of these graduates that we would be here till 10 o'clock tonight. So instead, I will just announce their name, share with them my congratulations later. Now we're officially ready. Our first graduate is Jasmine Renee Atkins. Jack Berry. Jacob Black. Good job, Jacob. 
Phelan, Nicole Brocksmith. Latoya Smith. Good job, hon. Noah James Daggett. Good job, Noah. Olivia. Rose Halsey. Andrew Hamlin. Good job, Andrew. Pedro Hernandez. <laughs> Good job, Pedro. Good job. Cheyenne, Caitlin. Oh, I'm sorry, Cheyenne. <laughs> Good job, Cheyenne. Iron Martin Killing. Gonar Kong. Job, Gonar. I'll get you later. Cesar Lopez Ramirez. Leandre Manuel. Good job, bud. Shelby Lynn Maynard. Dion Robinson. Good job, bud. <laughs> Lakayla Robinson. <laughs> Rebecca. Rogers. Good job. Devin Scott. John Soros the third. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon Dean Stevens. Good job, Brandon. 
Alfred Thacker IV. Treshawn Marquise Wilson. <laughs> Good job, buddy. And last but not least, Mr. Aaron Ortiz. So do another round of applause for our graduates. Boy, well, I'm sure you guys are thinking, what a relief. We're almost done. But not quite. There's still one more thing that you need to do. I'd like all of our graduates to stand up. This is going to make it official. You're going to take your tassel from the right side and you're going to turn it to the left side, signifying that you are now an official graduate. Turn around, face your families. Good job, guys. Great job, guys. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everybody that's in attendance today to help us continue the celebration and the personal congratulations of our graduates in the lobby where we have refreshments because we want the fun to continue. Good job. Thank you, guys. And congratulations.